The best example is Russia and their use of cyberspace to conduct their, what I would call, information warfare as part of the election. Uh, they have uh, goals that arguably are to keep us um, in a political churn. That's an advantage to them if we're going to focus internally. And so using cyberspace to, you know, to collect the emails, to do the trolling, to distribute the information, uh, and to take advantage of, frankly, the fact that we have a public that is a large proportion of which get their news off of social media. And then China, in uh, similar ways, it's very hard to hide the fact that uh, their R&D world is based a lot on theft of intellectual property. And so there's more than enough evidence in the open press about how China has used that capability. Uh, they're more subtle now, as we talked about, but again, they are not hesitant to use cyberspace to further their uh, strategic goals. Uh, my next concern, though, would be North Korea. Uh, they continue to build capability, um, arguably not rational, and arguably don't respect the same rules of the road. So I kind of think of the threat that way. I, I think at the end, China and Russia, I mean, this is a very generalized view of it, but they don't see near the separation between government activity and private sector activity that, that we do in the United States. And so um, they can use cyber pretty flexibly. They aren't they aren't as concerned with uh, precedent and the lack of international law, and uh, we are, you know. And so um, my personal opinion is, you know, one of our greatest strengths and one of our greatest weaknesses is we generally operate by the rules, right? And that's harder sometimes.